Hey, what's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this mock product ad using 3D layers in After Effects. In this tutorial, I'll be walking you through the entire process, from animating product images to manipulating our ad in 3D space. All right, so this is the mock ad I created to showcase what we're gonna be learning today. But instead of recreating this one, today we're gonna be creating an entirely new one from scratch. Let's get started. Double click in the project panel and create a new composition. I have mine set to 1920 by 1080 and it's 30 seconds long. Also make sure you have a lighter background color. Hit Q on your keyboard until you cycle through to the rectangle tool. Let's create a rectangle right on our screen and don't worry about the size or color yet. Open up the contents of your rectangle and let's go ahead and break this chain to manually change our dimensions to 1920 by 1080. Head over to the align panel and let's make sure it's centered up. If you don't see this panel, go up to window and make sure align is selected. I'm also going to round off my rectangle's corners and change the value to 20. Let's hit enter on our keyboard and rename this layer to screen. Next, hit S on your keyboard and let's scale this down to 80%. This is going to give us a little more flexibility if we want to zoom in on our screen, but we'll get to that later on. Let's head up to our Effects and Presets tab and search for the Gradient Ramp. Go ahead and drop this onto your layer. If we head over to our Effect Controls, we can change the start of our ramp to this upper left corner and the end of our ramp to the bottom right corner. Next, I'm going to drag in my color palette, which you can download from the link below, but I encourage you to use something you like. With our shape layer selected, let's use this eyedropper tool to change the start color to this dark blue and our end color to this pink. We can go ahead and get rid of this color palette. Awesome, so now we can drag in our product images, which you can also find in the link below. Now these are just images I found online, but any high quality PNG will work. I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to scale this down to a size that fits the screen. Now I want this image to slide into view from the top of the screen, so let's hit P on our keyboard to bring up the position control, and let's jump to about 20 frames and toggle the position stopwatch. Let's go back to the beginning of the timeline and move the image up. I'm also going to highlight these keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. But this looks a little boring, so let's double click on the last keyframe and select keyframe velocity. We're going to adjust the incoming velocity to 100 so that it comes to a slow stop. But since I want this image to only appear on the screen that we've made, we're going to toggle this button that preserves the underlying transparency. That looks much better. Awesome, let's hit Q on our keyboard to bring up the ellipse tool so we can make a shadow under the shoes and give it a little more depth. Right in the center, we're going to drag out an ellipse while holding the command key so it expands from the middle. Let's make it nice and flat. I'm going to drop it down a little as well. If we hit enter on our keyboard, we can rename this to shoe shadow. Now we want this to match the movement of our shoes, so let's hit S on the keyboard to bring up our scale animator and drop a keyframe here. Go back to the beginning of the timeline and let's change this to 0%. I'm also going to easy ease these keyframes. Now, we also need to make sure that we center up our anchor point, so let's click on the pan behind tool, and while holding command, double click one more time. If we want the movement of our shadow to match, we have to make sure that we change the incoming velocity of the last keyframe so it matches our shoes. Let's double click and go to keyframe velocity, and we can change this to 100. That looks a lot better. Now let's hit T on our keyboard to bring up the opacity and drop it to about 50%. We're also going to search for a Gaussian blur and drop this onto our layer. Let's bring this to 40 and we can drop the opacity a little more. This is starting to come together now, but it looks a little too stationary for me. So what we're going to do is add an expression to our image that helps give the look that it's hovering in place for a little. Under the position control of our shoe image, let's hover above the stopwatch, hold Alter Option, and click. This is going to open our expression tab, and we can go ahead and type in the expression wiggle, open parentheses, 1, comma, 20, close parentheses. Instead of hitting Enter, let's make sure to click outside of the box to apply our expression. As you can see, we get a little movement in the shoe. This first value is the interval or frequency that the movement occurs, and this second value is the amount. If we change the first number to 20, you can see how it affects our image. 
it gets really jittery. If we change the second value to 1, we get a much different type of jitter. That's basically how the wiggle expression works, and for today's video, let's type in 0.5 comma 10 to get some nice smooth movement. Now from here, we can add a few basic text animations to really tie things together and get something like this. I didn't want to make this a super long tutorial, so instead of going step by step, I'll do a quick walkthrough of all these animations. The first part that says results don't lie is made up of three layers that have a position animation. Then I just used the pen tool to create a mask for the shoe and keyframed its path. Next is the Nike logo, which is just a simple trim paths animation where the fill fades in. I have another video that goes over how to use trim paths in this way if you're interested. The last piece is this text animation, which as you can see just has a position and scale animation. Then right in the beginning I added a Gaussian blur and opacity fade. And that's pretty much it. I wanted to save time to go over how I created this 3D style website animation. To get started, let's go back to the ad we just made and duplicate the composition. Let's open up this new comp and delete everything except the screen. We can even delete this gradient ramp too. To get the scrolling website animation, I took a pretty long screenshot of the Nike website. To do this, I looked up their website and rotated my screen's orientation so that I could get a longer screenshot of the page. This is a quick and easy way that you can showcase a client's website if you don't have anything else to go off of. Now, I normally work in a 21x9 screen, so I was able to take a much longer screenshot that you can download from the link below. Let's go ahead and scale this image up so that it fits our screen. Also, let's make sure that everything is aligned to the center. We can go ahead and hit P on our keyboard to bring up the position control and scroll to the top of our page. Now we're going to toggle the preserve underlying transparency button so that our image is only available on the screen. To make things a little bit easier to see, I'm going to double click on my composition and open up the composition settings to give us a darker background color. I'm going to adjust this slightly, then let's go to the beginning of the timeline and put a keyframe for the position. Jump a few seconds ahead and scroll to the bottom of the page. Since this is moving pretty far, let's go out a few seconds further and move the end keyframe. We can keep adjusting this keyframe until we find a speed that we like. Let's go back to our first keyframe and hit F9 to easy ease. Awesome, so now we can grab all our layers, double click and go to pre-compose to put them in a separate composition. Let's name this Nike website. If we toggle between our timeline modes, we can make this new layer a 3D layer. This is going to allow us to manipulate the orientation around three axes. The first thing I want this to do is slide into view from the left side. Let's drop a position keyframe right at the beginning. Jump to about 20 frames and let's drop another one. Let's go back and change the start position all the way to the left. Let's also make sure to easy ease these two keyframes and change its incoming velocity to 100. Next, I want this to zoom in and rotate to the side, so let's jump forward a couple seconds and put another keyframe for the position. Then let's hit R on our keyboard and place a keyframe for each of these rotations. I'm going to jump ahead another 25 frames and change the Z position so that the screen moves forward in space. Then I'm going to adjust its Y rotation and bring it down a little. We can also move it more towards the center. Let's make sure to highlight all these keyframes and hit F9 to apply an easy ease. I'm also going to change the incoming velocities of these last two keyframes so that it moves a little smoother. The last thing I'm going to do is add a drop shadow to give it a little more depth. Let's go ahead and drop this onto our layer and mess with these values until we find something that we like. And if we play from the beginning, here's what we get. All right, and there we have it. That's how you can create this quick product animation right here in After Effects. Hopefully you learned something new from this video that you can take and apply in your own work. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does make a difference. If you have any questions, drop a comment below, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.